Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Previous Month Today. I'm not John Oliver. Just in time for a quick recap of the week. Or rather, not. I'm not John Oliver, I can do whatever I want. So let's just get to the good bit. Last week tonight, and the shows like it, are garbage. And here's why. But before we dig into that potentially controversial statement, I want to say, I love garbage. We all love garbage. Why do you think we call food with flavor and taste garbage food? I love garbage food. But we call it garbage food because if we eat it too much, it's really bad for us. And it's not really a part of a healthy diet. And I can already read your comment saying, Hang on there, ethnically indistinguishable but less attractive John Oliver. Last week tonight is a comedy show. Do you really think it's a fair comparison to compare last week tonight to Cheetos? And, you know, a better comparison would probably be vanilla ice cream for when you want ice cream but chocolate is too spicy. But I don't think it's an unfair comparison to compare last week tonight and shows like it to garbage food. They are the garbage food equivalent of late night TV media. But before we dive into last week tonight, let's give some background. Political satire, much like the cottage cheese you bought two weeks ago, is a complicated and potentially dangerous subject. And this is a very important part of the democratic process. If you literally aren't allowed to make fun of your politician, then that severely limits your freedom of expression. And so, political satire, then, is a form of expressing that political liberty. Historically, you have found political satire in all forms of media. In newspapers, you can find them in political satirical cartoons. And you can also find it in movies such as The Dictator. In the last couple of decades, political satire has mostly been the domain of late-night TV hosts, the most famous of which is probably Jon Stewart. Now, Jon Stewart headlined The Daily Show for what many would consider to be the golden era of The Daily Show. The Daily Show is also where many modern political comedians got their start. Samantha Bee, Stephen Colbert and John Oliver have all been correspondents at The Daily Show and have all gone on to make their own political comedy shtick. And they're all garbage. And my issue basically boils down to this. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not a journalist at all, obviously. Obviously, I'm a comedian. The idea that political satire shows aren't news, or rather are devoid of news, are devoid of journalistic content. The interview with um, Edward Snowden was a pretty big interview. Right. Yeah, it was, and yeah, it was, uh, that was a bizarre experience. Why? Because, you know, I was only there for two days and um, it was tense. Not the interview, but Everything around the interview was tense because, you know, I felt like we were being watched all the time and that's because we probably were. Why do you think he chose you and not a, and not a should I say, respected journalist? <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I, I really appreciate the fact that <laughs> you're right. I'm not a respected journalist because I'm not a journalist. Are you a journalist? No, no, I'm not. So, no, I'm a comedian. But you're doing the job. No, I'm doing the job of a comedian. Now, all of the shows I've mentioned are guilty of this, but last week tonight is probably the most guilty of them all. It's very established, it deals with many informative topics, and spends a lot of time informing the audience about those topics, and thirdly, it is available and widely popular on YouTube. Last week tonight uploads the main segment of their show to YouTube every week. And they were one of the first shows to actually do this. It doesn't just publish comedy skits or outtakes like other shows do. They publish the main segment of the show. And this means that the show stands out by being practically free for most of the world to watch. You might miss out on some skits or some humorous content, but the main segment of the show is still there. Every week, every episode, there's gonna be 20 minutes free to watch on YouTube. 
And there are many reasons why the show would do this. The show gets ahead of pirates who would upload the show to YouTube anyway. It makes the show shareable so you can give it to all your friends and they can enjoy it for free. It gives a taste about what it would be like to experience the full content if you were to buy into that sort of experience. Speaking of which, and this is why Last Week Tonight stands above similar shows when it comes to my criticism. And that means that a lot more people can watch, but more importantly, learn from Last Week Tonight. There's this thing called the John Oliver effect, something that John Oliver himself claims does not exist. So are you aware of this thing called the John Oliver effect? Ugh. The term reflects the influence the show has over the topic that it covers. Most famously, it expressed itself when John Oliver asked his fans to write to the FCC about net neutrality and crashed the FCC server. However, similar things happen to almost every single topic that the show covers. But even if the show itself doesn't actually deal with something, the show often prompts other news organizations to cover the topic as well. Because it's in the media now. It's trending. It's in the public discussion. It's in the discourse. So what John Oliver is doing is making people aware of a topic and also providing a way for people to act on the information that he has put into context for them. And that is what news usually do. And there are even cases of mayors and senators and judges all citing directly John Oliver as the inspiration for changed policy or sentencing. A month after your story on bail, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced he will ease policies for low-level offenders. That's one. Okay. After your rant on U.S. territory rights, a judge cited the episode in her court decision okay. on a class action case brought by Guam citizens over a tax refund. And this is my last one. Yeah. Your famous net neutrality segment got the public to react so strongly, John, it crashed the FCC web. web. So, the website. This, I've crashed the, the website, web. The I website. Crashed, no, I crashed the whole web. The website. The whole web went down. Yeah. You, you know what I mean. But yeah. Is it intimidating to you, or is it something you said, I can't wait to get in there? No, cause, well, because I ignore all of that. So, do the ripple, ripple effect off the show is nothing to do with us. Once we've done the show, we're finished. And they are not doing that because the segment is so knee slappingly hilarious that they just decided to change their politics. They're doing it because the show informs and also shapes the public consciousness of the issues that it covers. And that's good, right? Because mostly John Oliver is pretty okay. And I mean, there's no real harm here, is it? John Oliver seems like a decent enough dude. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue that. But this isn't actually about the content itself. This is about how the content is framed in the show. So the ripple, ripple effect off the show is nothing to do with us. Once we've done the show, we're finished. If you classify a body of work as news, then you can criticize that work in the context of news. And you can criticize the creator of the content as a news producer, a journalist. And that means that you can make sure that the content the creator has created lives up to the standards of influential reporting. But you can't do that if you just call it comedy. And again... <laughs> uh, no, I'm not a journalist at all, obviously. So let's dig into that. Is John Oliver a journalist? And is Last Week Tonight a comedy show? Let's start with the first. Is John Oliver a journalist? I would say yeah, a journalist is someone who collects, contextualizes, and presents information about current events to a mainstream audience. That is what he is doing. And it's not just me saying this. This concern has been raised by many, many people. So here's what Fortune's 40 under list of which you're on, uh, yeah. and the Vanity Fair New Establishment says, Oliver has established himself as perhaps the most disruptive journalist on television. Ugh. They're, Ugh. They're... Now, I'm not saying that presenting those criticism in that way is dismissive. Except, no, yeah, I'm, I am. That's, that's incredibly dismissive and very disrespectful to the reporters and journalists and opinion writers who do that. Their opinions matter too, John. Ugh. You say that you respect journalists, but not when they criticize you? Hmm. Now the term journalism is vague. 
And I would argue that most people who do any kind of news information presenting is a form of journalist, including YouTube essayists. We have a responsibility to the content that we create and also to the audience that watches that content. And I would say that John Oliver should have that responsibility too. And that is why I call him a journalist. If someone had a YouTube channel telling tens of millions of people about a topic, informing them about that topic and then sharing their opinion on it, we would say that they probably have some journalistic responsibility to that. And that is what John Oliver is doing. And if that person were to defend their format, however damaging it might be, with it's just jokes bro, we would recognize that as bullshit instantly. So why do we not apply that to John Oliver? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not a journalist at all, obviously. Obviously I'm a comedian. But you're doing the job of a journalist. No, I'm doing the job of a comedian. It's always interested me that Jon Stewart has, has often had to tell people, hey, we're, we're a comedy show. Yeah, we're, we're not a news program. Yeah, he's right. Right, but there is this blurring, is there not? Not in our minds. Not no. in your minds. No, no. I mean, yeah, I can't speak for him, but, you know, yeah, well, we're comedians. The pieces within Last Week Tonight that contain journalism, that contain presenting of information as well as contextualizing opinions, they don't go away. Even if you present them as jokes, or even if they sometimes are jokes. Just because something is a joke doesn't mean it is devoid of political or journalistic meaning. If 60 Minutes stopped every 15 minutes to present a meme, you wouldn't say that that stopped being a journalism show, a news program. You would just say that, oh, that's a news program with some memes in it. And I think the same thing goes for John Oliver. He is entertaining. I watch his show every week. It's genuinely funny to me. I love Last Week Tonight. But that doesn't change the fact that to many people he is a de facto news source. A lot of people watched last week tonight to learn about the topics that he presents. And eventually that has to put some responsibility on the creator of that. John Oliver has some responsibility to the news that he produces and it is irresponsible to say nah that but he has made it clear that that is a responsibility that he does not want the only responsibility <laughs> you I don't want that. as a comedian yeah. is that I've, I, have, I have to make people laugh yeah. if I don't do that and I'm sure that I often don't then I have failed and that responsibility to the modern discourse is what I think he needs to deal with to not be garbage if John Oliver messes up a factual statement or presents something out of context it's very hard to criticize that because he can just roll back and say, well, it's a comedy show, bro. But because this is a de facto source of news for many, many people, that means that they will take it in as news. They will not just view it as comedy. People learn from watching Last Week Tonight. People take in context from Last Week Tonight. And it's hard to criticize potentially missing context or potentially false statements when the defense is easy, well, it's just comedy, bro. It's just comedy. For example, the segment on automation. If you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube, like anything. You can go there and watch that and then come back. Or watch it later, actually. Don't interrupt this video. Please keep watching. The segment on automation is... Eh. It lacks critical context relating to worker agency and the structural problems that actually lead to workers suffering under automation. But you wouldn't hear that. You don't see that in the show. You don't get that wider context. You get one perspective, the perspective of John Oliver. And sometimes that perspective is flawed. And the person watching this has probably seen a lot of people sharing clips from last week tonight on Twitter or on Facebook because they like the information. They think that the information comes from a reliable news source because that is the way that it is presented but not taken responsibility for. So you are concerned about getting it right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because you can't... That got you. I mean, you, you, you really care about that. 
for sure. Yeah. Because you can't build, if a joke's built on sand, it just doesn't work or it like collapses. It's very, very important to us that we are, it's, we're solid. People see it as informational because it is. And sometimes when the show lacks context, it's hard to criticize that because the show built itself on being a comedy show. And you don't want to criticize a political satire show for getting something wrong, right? You don't want to be the person who criticizes comedy and gets upset by jokes. No one likes that. But the problem then becomes, can you criticize anything that John Oliver presents? So I would say that John Oliver is a news presenter. He presents news. He is a journalist, whether he likes it or not. The segments that he does are influential, impactful, and many people used it as a source of news every week. If it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then it's a journalist in a comedy show. But that brings us to the next point. Is Last Week Tonight a comedy show, then? If John Oliver is a journalist, should we instead classify Last Week Tonight as a news program? I would say that Last Week Tonight is a comedy show. But it's also more than that. Part of the charm of Last Week Tonight is that it is funny. It sometimes gets you to laugh. But I would also say that it is also news. And before you accuse me of being inconsistent, I want to say that Last Week Tonight is a comedy show. But it is also a news program. The way we do media criticism is not just by looking at the whole thing, but we have to look at the segments that build up that whole thing. And yes, there are yokes, and there are skits and stuff mixed in, but that's just the point. It's mixed in. The comedy is never the main segment of the show. The main segment of the show is always the story the segment, the informational bit that you will learn about. The thing that you remember from the show is the information. The thing that you take away from watching an episode is rarely the jokes. It's more often the wider implications of the social issue that has been dealt with. That is what they do. That is also what they talk about in the marketing. He said hit comedy. I hear that now. At best, you're an acquired taste. You have made your point. Sometimes we don't want a British man yelling at us about how the world is ending for a whole hour. Well, it's a half an hour show. Doesn't feel like it. So the question fundamentally boils down to this. Do you define a body of work as a whole, or do you define a body of work by the content? And the answer is obviously both. That is how all media criticism work. And that is why it is so infuriating when John Oliver is pretty clear about how he views the work. So are you aware of this thing called the John Oliver effect? Uh... But this leads to a strange place, right? Because I like Last Week Tonight because it is informational. I don't watch Last Week Tonight just because of the jokes. It's not really that fun comedy. The comedy acts as a nice couch to rest in while involving yourself in a very deep or complicated topic. But the information bit is also enjoyable. It's fun to learn. We all love learning. We love soaking up information. That is why we watched last week tonight. That is why documentaries exist. That is why channels like SciShow have become so big on YouTube. We love learning. The information itself is enjoyable. And that is why you, every night, Google different sexual positions. For the information. But if the information and journalism is there by accident, and the show contains zero reporting, then what are we left with? We're left with pretty meh comedy? I don't really watch Last Week Tonight to laugh. And if I do, it's maybe for a minute. The jokes that we're left with are kind of meh. Describing countries wrong, funny hashtags, one-off references, and putting celebrities in costumes. But beyond that, for a 20-minute segment, there's not that much comedy. 
the entire show is built on journalism. It's built on the news segment with comedy sprinkled in. Now, I'm not saying that John Oliver isn't funny. He is funny. I watch it every week. People in the audience laugh. And I'm not saying that he needs to do fewer jokes or anything. God forbid, I need some joy in my life. But Last Week Tonight thrives because it is news. It is not a crutch. It is literally the foundation of the show. People crave facts, but more importantly, people crave opinions. You don't see people on CNN telling their audience to write to the FCC. And it's refreshing sometimes to have news presented to us in a more uplifting, more direct tone that is more connected with what people are actually like. John Oliver's audience is built on the fact that mainstream news is boring. No one likes mainstream news, while his show is funny. It's entertaining. His news is funnier and more entertaining than mainstream news. And that is also why we have seen not just the rise of Last Week Tonight, but so many other political comedy shows. People love news. People love journalism. But they don't like mainstream news outlets. And many of these shows aren't directly satirical. They're not really presenting the topic in an overblown, funny fashion sometimes. These shows present an issue in often a very factually based, calm manner, and then make jokes next to that. And that is the difference. In most satire, the news themselves are funny. But in many of these political shows, the news are sad, and the jokes are kind of funny. All of these shows are grounded in the fact that they are informative. They are sharing knowledge with the audience, and that is what news are. It is still satire though, like they are still satirical, but there comes a line where you're not just making fun of the news, you have become the news. And you know what, that's fine actually, that has happened many times in political history. But just take responsibility for it. Stop saying that it isn't happening, it obviously is happening. Many people think it is happening, and many people have said so. And for you, John Oliver, to dismiss that out of hand and be kind of rude about it? I feel like that does more harm to the concept of journalism than most things, actually. Eventually, we need to ask ourselves with how little accountability we can assign to these shows because these shows are accountable for the effect that they have. Even if John Oliver says that he has no power, which is an obvious lie. These shows do significant, influential, political change while being funny. But they still do the first bit and they need to take responsibility for that. Because if we don't want to take responsibility for that, that leads the public discourse into a very dark place. If they just keep saying, oh, it's just entertainment, brah, it doesn't actually matter, it's just, it's just entertainment, brah, it's just entertainment, it's just entertainment, brah, then other people will say that too. There is a pattern currently within media to do influential political content that changes people's lives for the better and worse, but then hide that by saying that it's, oh, it's just jokes, it's just, it's nothing, it just means, it's just jokes, it doesn't matter, it's just, it's just entertainment. And John Oliver and people like him haven't done anything particularly awful yet, but they are contributing to a type of discourse that I feel is very harmful to the way we just do discourse. They are normalizing the idea that you can be incredibly influential, political, informative, but take no responsibility for what that means. That you can basically become a news program and then say, well, it's just jokes, Joe. It's just jokes, so it doesn't matter. And while John Oliver can do that fairly well, is that really the way we want to have political discourse? But you're doing the job of a journalist. No, I'm doing the job of a comedian. So my, I make jokes about the news. 
So I'm, I'm pretty clear about the lane that I'm in. But, but let me just say that you have more credibility than most journalists here in the United States, and I would say in many other countries. But that is more of an insult to the current state of journalism than it is no. a com Yeah, well, we're comedians. I think that becomes more a sad commentary on news than it does on us, though. Like it or not, John Oliver is part of the political discourse. And yes, it is jokes. But jokes are not devoid of meaning. John Oliver and other shows that build on the same idea are contributing to this zeitgeist of a discourse where you can claim that as long as you have entertaining elements, as long as you have comedy, your thing, your body of work is actually devoid of any political, journalistic or informative meaning. Like it or not, but last week tonight has become a phenomenon viewed by millions of people every week. The stories that they cover have real implications in people's lives, and it is not just entertainment. Despite what John Oliver says, he has power, and the John Oliver effect is real, even if he denies it is. So what's my solution then? If I am also some kind of semi-serious news presenter, what is my solution? Well, it's simple. Just tell the truth. Just take responsibility for the impact that the show actually has. Because it is funny news. It's still funny, but it is still news. People still turn to it to be educated or to confirm their already existing opinions on a topic. But you can't just keep calling it comedy. That doesn't work. Sooner or later we're gonna end up in a society where you can do basically anything, but as long as you pepper in some jokes, you can just resign responsibility. And that's not really a world that we want to have, is it? The result of this is that Last Week Tonight is promoting a discourse that enables fake news. And that's despite partially building its brand on not being fake news. But they haven't done that by actually taking journalistic responsibility. They just said that they're not news at all. We can't be fake news if we're not news, right? But we are already in a point of political discourse where comedians can have impactful change on people's lives and then just resign responsibility. Now, John, love, obviously you're not responsible for the discourse of Steven Crowder. Obviously not. But you and Steven Crowder contribute to a very similar type of discourse. And I think that that's kind of harmful. You're still presenting your opinion based on your version of the facts, being a de facto news source for your audiences, while resigning any responsibility to that audience by just claiming that it's just comedy, brah. And you could so easily not do that because Last Week Tonight is mostly fine. You mostly stay on topic, you mostly have the facts correct, you mostly have things in context. Sometimes you don't, and that's a problem, but that's a topic for another video. But if you just called yourself funny news, if you just took responsibility of what your show does, I think that would make a significant change in how we do political discourse. And more importantly to you maybe, not much would have to change in the show itself, right? All you would have to do is take responsibility for your own work. Take charge of your own creations instead of just resigning responsibility the second you're done with an episode. Personally, I think it's incredibly disrespectful and irresponsible for John Oliver to dismiss any responsibility that he or the show has over the content or the audience the show has. And I think it's especially disrespectful to the audience itself because the fact that Last Week Tonight is informational, the fact that it is news is... I think a large part of why Last Week Tonight is so successful. And I just wish that you would do better with that. And you know what? That's it. I That's the hot take for uh, previous month today or whatever I called my show. I'm not John Oliver. I don't have to end this on a musical number. I can end this however the fuck I want. You might have some concerns if you're watching this. You might have some concerns that I might not have presented John Oliver or other shows in a fair context, or maybe I 
missed some factual thing. Maybe I missed an interview that John Oliver has done recently or something. And to you, I want to say, it's just a comedy show. It's just jokes, bro. It's just jokes. I'm a comedian. I have no responsibility. Oh, and John, if you happen to be watching this, just because you're mostly factually correct and just because you are mostly contextualizing properly, not always, but mostly, that doesn't change the fact that the framing that you have contributed to is harmful. And to me, it's kind of hypocritical when the show criticizes a topic for not taking responsibility over something when you yourself won't take responsibility for anything. You present facts and context, but you are responsible for the framing. And the framing is what I talked about today. You may not agree with me, that's fine. But you are normalizing a dangerous method of interacting with your audience. Resigning responsibility is not a healthy way to do that, either for your own show, but mostly for society. Now, I'm still gonna watch your show. I think it's fun. I'm gonna watch it. I think it's fine to watch it. I just, I kind of just, I just kind of wish that you did your job in a way that didn't contribute to a harmful type of discourse, a harmful framing device, because that is what you are doing. But until you admit that you hold that power, that you have that influence, and that by definition then you also have the responsibility that comes with that power, I gotta call you garbage, dude. <laughs> because just like garbage food, you are tasty, you are enjoyable. I love watching your content, but it's harmful. And if we do it too much, I think it's dangerous. You need a wider diet, sure. And I think that maybe watching a show like this every now and then, that's probably fine. But you know that there are people who don't watch the news, but that watched last week tonight. And their diet consists entirely of you then. Their news source is you. And just having a diet of junk food is... That's, that's really dangerous. Or you know what, better yet, fly me to New York. Take me to New York, let me take over the show and I will show you how it's done. Maybe, maybe you'll convince me. I mean, maybe my my hunger for fame is probably larger than my than my idea of ethical media production. Maybe. And if you want to see that, you should let John know uh, by tweeting last week tonight, but Mia this time uh, on Twitter. And I hope he gets the message. And now, this. And now, the thanking of the patrons, and stuff like that. That's it for this episode of Previous Month Today, or whatever I called my satire thing. I want to start out by thanking Curio for lending their voice to me as the deep voice of the And Now narrator. You should check out their channel, it's good. You'll find a link in the description, you should, you should go, go, subscribe to them, it's it's, it's good. They're good. Go. I want to thank all my patrons that make sure that I can, that I can do this as a job, that I can, that I can sustain myself by making YouTube videos. But I want to give a special thanks to Alice, Amelia Fletcher, Christopher Steinmuller, Dirty Computer, Xbox, Emil Rutkowski, hopefully I pronounce it correctly this time, if not, feel free to give me shit, because I deserve it if I, come, if I fucked it up this time too. Emma, not Goldman, Fox Kant, Ibrahim Aldridge, Jörgen Danielsen, Katarzyna JJ, Kim, Linus 2.0, Liaren Sagan, Marsa Servan, or Marsin Servin, 
If it's French and I butchered your name, I'm sorry. If it's not French and I butchered your name, I'm I'm sorry. Let me know. Phobos two three nine zero. Rosie. Ryan Kolak. William Pietri. Rex. And Unico. Also, um, I'm actually like budget neutral in my life right now, and I'm actually I'm actually earning enough money to do this as a job. Mind you, I'm not earning like bank, but I'm I'm earning enough to like to pay rent, to pay my bills, and I just want to say that I'm 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 so deeply unimaginatively like mind-bogglingly grateful because I, I don't know what I would do without you, honestly. And I just wanna, I just wanna say thank you from, from the deepest parts of my heart. Thank you so much for, for everything. Thank you so much. I'll see you, uh, I'll see, yeah, I'll see, I'll, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, uh, thank, thank you.